Welcome back to the program. Well, on Saturday morning during Outback Focus, thanks to Outback Whips and other, we had the privilege of speaking with Bob Irwin and also Steve Redford, a local uh, property owner of White Leeds Property, as well as uh, a local business person. Now, uh, both Bob and Steve have been working pretty hard across the weekend on White Leeds Station, and uh, Bob joins me back in the studio again this morning. Hi, Bob. Good morning, Damon. How are you going? Oh, well, indeed. You uh, must have enjoyed the beautiful Silver City weather across the weekend. Mate, uh, you know, I sort of come from the subtropics and and um, I, I was concerned about your weather down in this part of the country, but it's been absolutely magnificent. Now, we, we spoke on Saturday morning about the terrific work that uh, Stephen and Marg are doing out there at White Lead Station uh, in preserving the, the land and so forth, but you've got someone else that's been travelling around the country with you, uh, Amanda French, who uh, is obviously someone who's also very passionate, but a younger version of you, I guess you could say. Well, well, my, uh, y- you know, my thoughts are these days that I'm getting so old and wrinkly now that, um, a- a- and I'm kind of not having those young ideas that that we need to go into the future with. So my my ambition is to have someone like Amanda. Um, who can actually take over this role and you know as 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 we get older we get set in our ways and we get a bit stale and you know it's nice to have these really fresh ideas and ideas that are coming from a different angle mm. and and, and I, I'm I'm really excited now that we're getting more and more young Australians that are aware of the problems within our environment. Hi Amanda how are you going? Good morning, good thing. Now, what's your? how did you meet meet Bob, first of all? How did you get involved with, with this man? Uh, well, I knew of Bob, but I don't think Bob would have remembered me because we were working at Australia Zoo together long ago. And I came into a bit of a pickle when I thought it would be a good idea to send um, powdered milk formula to Indonesia to save an orphaned elephant calf. Wow. And when it went through customs, they kind of said, well, you know, you're not an organisation and it was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. So I gave Bob a call and I said, would you mind helping me out? And he said, yes. And we were sending white powdered goods off to Indonesia with Bob's name on it, which was a bit of a funny story, but it all worked out well in the end. Yeah. Okay. So obviously you're a true believer in what, what Bob's trying to do. Absolutely, and I think Bob doesn't quite realise what he is for a, for conservation in Australia and that so many of us, you know, especially the younger generation, are doing what we're doing because of Bob and his son, Steve, of course. So I think it's really important that we continue his, his legacy and, and his work through to the next generation and that it doesn't stop with Bob. Mm, indeed. Now, your association with Broken Hill goes back to when The Amazing Race was actually in town and that's when you first met Mark and Steve. Absolutely. Mark and I were at the um, the little EDC office, um, sitting there working away very, very hard. And Margaret actually brought um, all of the American producers onto White Leeds, her property, for a barbecue one night. And that was the first time. I mean, she sort of mentioned that she was into wildlife because we got talking about the zoo and a lot of conservation stuff. And that was sort of how we connected in the office. But it wasn't until I got to her property and I saw her in her environment that I thought, okay, this woman's serious about this and this property is amazing. And I actually went on to America after that to visit some of the producers. We all stayed in touch and they've still said that this episode they did and they've travelled around the world, you know, eight to ten times since then. They've said that this episode in Broken Hill because of Marg was just the most memorable experience. That's fantastic, seeing yeah. the, you know, those kangaroos jumping down the street. You know, I think it was Gibson Street, wasn't it? Someone, all the dressed up in kangaroo suits and then going to Memorial Oval. I mean, that was great for Broken Hill. Yeah, absolutely. It was It was a very, very unique thing that happened. I mean, you know, all the training we did. I remember when we were here and we weren't to tell anyone what we were doing when we were trialling all the activities. We had people hopping along in kangaroo <laughs> shoes down the highway and... <laughs> It was a yeah, it was a really interesting time, but it was certainly memories that I'll have forever. What was your well. role with the with the TV show? Um, well, I was the transportation coordinator, right. so I think we we hired about fifty vehicles here, and you pr- people probably saw these white you know four wheel drives parked in town, thinking, "What are these?" 
and then we sort of had a live shoot to get it all up and running and it just went like that it was so quick yeah. but it was a crazy crazy time but very very fun so obviously conservation is is dear to your heart and and I, I've been told that um, you actually went over to Sumatra to, to save a baby elephant tell us about that yeah so uh, we sort of were approached about it a friend of ours had been over there she was a vet and she went to stay at this elephant camp and she came back and she said there's a baby over there a baby elephant who's um, orphaned and she's malnourished and it's going to cost about two grand a month to feed her Um, the camp where she is it's Indonesia so they don't sort of have the finances we have that they can't afford to feed her and I couldn't stop thinking about it I'm not a vet I was just an everyday person at the time I was working in office selling medical supplies and I contacted Bob and I just said, we've got to do something about it. I never knew I would be as involved as I ended up being. It went from me thinking I'd fundraise to send her food to me living in the jungle and raising her. Wow. Uh, with a group of other people. I had two other guys with me and we were just up. She was still having nightmares because her mother had been you know, killed in front of her. She cried like a human. She, you know, she had separation anxiety. But the the beautiful part of the story was another female elephant at the camp who'd also was a human elephant conflict animal actually took her on as her own and adopted her. So she she suckled from her, she got comfort from her, she stroked her. You know, it was amazing to see. But, yeah, just an amazing thing just for an ordinary person to go over and see such devastation. You know, we really do live in a lucky country and we really need to protect what we have here. So what can, can young people do for saving our environment and saving, you know, the land that we live on? I think it's important for young people to get involved and know the issues that we have in Australia. And I so often hear about my friends, you know, going off to do an eco-volunteer program in Indonesia or somewhere in South America and they might pay, you know, $4,000 for the opportunity. But the fact is that we have projects here in our own country that need attention. Bob and I just got back from, we did a far north Queensland road trip. So we went from cans down to the wit sundays and we sort of visited every project we could we could find along the way to see what was happening in our own backyard and you know there's some devastating things there's only 50 cassowaries left in the mission beach area mm. you know you've got the the tree kangaroo which i think they they um estimated 36 percent of queenslanders don't even know what a tree oh no i think it was 36 percent of queenslanders that were surveyed knew that we even had tree kangaroos you know so there's one dedicated woman up there and she's doing this amazing thing and she's the only person in the world doing it so there's so much that is going on Mm. that we as young australians can get involved in i think it's really important yeah indeed and of course um bob bob your your foundation um the conservation foundation is one great way to to get involved oh yes it is indeed and and uh, and 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 we you know, we try to do as much as we possibly can. And that's, you know, that's why uh, getting back to the conservation of our land across the whole of the country is is, is so important. And to actually edu- educate the young children as much as we can that, um, you know, once these animals are extinct, they're extinct. You know, we can't get them back. And, you know, it's very sad to think that Australia as a country has the world worst ex- you know extinction record in the world for mammals and so that's a you know that's a very sad reflection on how we are at mm. the moment do you have a website that we can we can yes. go on to yes we do um but I don't know it off hand. <laughs> <laughs> BobEvanWildlife.com. All right, so we can get jump on there, yeah. learn more about what you're yes. both trying to do. Mm. Um, and obviously on a local level, we'll keep people in, in touch with what Mark and Steve are doing out there at White Leeds. Excellent, Damon. Thanks right. very much. Thank you again for both for coming in. Have a safe trip back back to Queensland. Where, where are you living these days? Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm about three and a half hours northwest of uh, Brisbane, uh, out in God's country, or that's what I call it. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's basically eucalypt forest, yep. and, but it's it's a property set aside, similar to Margaret and Steve, for the conservation. Mm. We don't have domestic stock; we only have wildlife, and you know, it's a beautiful place to return home to. Indeed, I appreciate your time. Thanks, thanks for coming to Broken Hill. That's uh, Bob Irwin and also Amanda French, uh, conservationist and uh, helping to save our environment. This is Damo's Bigger Brighter Brecky Show. Thanks to Harvey Norman. I'll be back right after this.